Nikki Wilson-Harris, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, it's nice to be here. Now, the topic that we're going to discuss today is particularly interesting and it's the DNA of moods. Why don't you introduce us to the topic? Well, the DNA of moods is, is a topic that I, I chose that topic as a way of explaining that moods are things that we live in all the day. Slightly different to emotions in that they're emotions that have taken up residence in our body. They affect the way that we feel, they affect the way that we talk and affect the way that we respond to experiences that we find ourselves in. So what makes a mood different? What makes a mood different is that it tends to hang around. And in some cases, we live in moods all the time that we are blissfully unaware of. So for example, you may wake up this morning and you're not thinking about the mood that you're in, and you put on a, a black jersey, look at yourself in the mirror and go, I'm not going to wear that today. You know, that's, that's an emotional response to where you are. But if you woke up with that feeling every single day, then that's a, that's a mood of kind of disengagement, of not wanting to be where you are doing what you are. And most of the time we try and duck and dive and hide from what our, our mood is trying to tell us, where we could spend some time to understand what is it that we're not taking care of, what is it that we could engage with that could possibly create other ways of us being more resourceful in the moment. It's fascinating what you're saying because <laughs> I know I, I would often say to my husband, ugh, I'm just in a bad mood today and want that to be the end of the conversation. I, I don't like okay. to think about why I'm in a bad mood or perhaps I use the I'm in a bad mood today to excuse me probably snapping at him. Well, or how, does, how does that serve you? Well, it doesn't, which is, which is what I, I want to talk to you about. So okay. many of us would, would say, ugh, we're just in a bad mood, but that bad mood is not something that we ever look further into. But you're saying, actually, there's probably something else there. Yeah, you're choosing that frame of reference. You're choosing that way of being in that moment. There's something about the way that you're feeling that you're not wanting to either, you could avoid it, you could shift it, there are a whole lot of choices. A, a mood is, a bad mood in particular, is, is possibly something that we're choosing not to deal with things that are, we're experiencing or we haven't yet found a way to deal with. So very often avoidance comes up, very often you want to run from it, you want to hide from it, you want it to go away. Um, and often it doesn't because it's trying to tell you something. Hmm. Nikki, why, why is it then important for us to, to start addressing these moods and to try and understand where they're coming from? Well, imagine, imagine if you could choose a mood. Imagine if you could find a way into a different experience. I mean, when you're in a bad mood, what's the knock-on effect? Go into work, everybody gets it. You're wan wandering around your colleagues, there's that mm around where you are and what's going on for you. Um, you're, you physically take on a different shape. So a bad mood, a grumpy mood can sometimes be resentment or it could be resignation. Both of those are things that we're fighting inside ourselves. It's an internal state. So we're fighting inside ourselves something that we're not accepting, something that we're not prepared to work with. And the bad mood t takes on a shape in our body. Sometimes we have just have a feeling, a sensation that something's going on. In our gut there are about 500 neurons and they just send emotional messages around our body all the time. And whether we are aware of it or not, the, the, your, your body is adjusting to all of that. And once it gets to the brain, it decides, ah, oh, this is not a, a healthy mood for me right now. And what we do is we let the mood have us. It's like a silent ninja surrounded us. <laughs> it's got us in a moment and, you know, there's no getting away from it. And what if you could say, how's it? You know, what are you doing here? Um, maybe, just maybe, there could be some other ways of working with yourself. So why does it matter? Because it can shift. By, by engaging with it, you can shift your physical experience, you can shift your emotional experience, you can take responsibility for what's going on. By not paying attention to it, actually you're chucking responsibility away. You're saying it's okay, you know, I'm, I'm gonna stay here. And I can tell you that one of the things that we do a lot is self-pity. We just dive in there and we wallow because that way we can blame the world. We can blame somebody out there for what's going on in our ourselves. The critical thing to consider is that nobody can make us feel anything. That's all us. So why does it matter? Because we've got an opportunity to shift or do something with it. Nikki, tell us a little bit about your professional life and how um, identifying and helping people through these particular moods is part of your day to day. Well, I'm a coach, so I have um, the best job in the world. I get to share um, some of the kind of experiences that people are having 
whether it's good experiences, bad experiences, people who are shifting careers, people who are looking to engage in different ways of working inside a career. I work um, from kind of a okay, broad, broad span. I do work in, in townships in Philippi with um, people who are struggling to grow businesses, working with them, build their values, create a way of, of dealing with them, um, and how to, how to become, sorry, this is very garbled. That's got to be a rewind. Sure. <laughs> Do you want to take it from the top there? <laughs> Please. It yeah. felt very garbled. No felt I was losing it all over the place. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I've asked you how how you sort of implement this or, or deal with this in your, your professional capacity. Okay. Mm. Thank you. So moods are an interesting way in which we can begin dealing with some of the challenges that we're facing. And some of the work that I do is working with a variety of diverse people, from people who are starting businesses within a small township area to people who are functioning um, in sort of highly complex business environments. And by working with moods and by working with language, by working with the body, people can begin to adjust some of their experiences and work they do. So as a coach, that's the work I do. I sit and I work with people around helping them to define what their experiences are, helping them to understand how better they can shift their experiences, and also creating options. We don't often look at what other options there are. We're focused on those little dots. We connect the dots together. Those dots tell us that this is what our life is. And we build a whole load of assessments around that. We create our identity around that. We forget about the role that history plays, that culture plays, in how that informs our listening to the world and what's going on for us and also what might be possible for us in the work that we do. So I work with people to help unlock their ability to engage with themselves in a more effective way.